Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 425. My opponent played uh, d4 here, and I played d5. I still wanted to try out the uh, Chagorin defense if I got a chance, so if he played uh, c4, I was going to play knight to c6. Uh, but he didn't play c4, he played, uh, he didn't play knight f3, that's what I've been seeing a lot of, knight f3 or e3, these quiet systems from white seem to be very popular amongst the blitz players these days. Now he plays the uh, third choice here, bishop to g5. <laughs> and so uh, this is like a Trompowski. The Trompowski is, uh, if uh, just to show you what that is, that is uh, if you respond to the move uh, d4 with knight to uh, f6, the second choice there, instead of d5, then bishop to g5. This is the Trompowski, putting immediate pressure and, but there are interesting lines here. You can go knight e4 and then later support the uh, knight there with d5 or play more sharply. There's, there's lots of different ways to play the Trumpowski. But here uh, in the game, let's see, in the game after d4, d5, uh, and just put the bishop out there immediately. So, uh, so if my knight comes out, which is a top choice actually, you can bring the knight out and allow him to uh, give up the bishop pair in exchange for damaging the pawn structure. And uh, that's a position that uh, white can play with some interesting chances, and I think that's the uh, the main idea. Um, this is known as the Levitsky attack in the the uh, encyclopedia, the ECO code, um, but it's more commonly called the Hodgson attack after Julian Hodgson, an English grandmaster, used to play this way. I think he also played the Trumposky, so it made sense uh, fit that in his repertoire. Anyway, I played the second choice here, which is h6. You can also just kind of ignore it for a while and play c6, shoring up your center. <laughs> but, well, this seems to be an okay way to play. Bishop h4. And now the move c6. So, so c6 with or without uh, h6 seems to be the main idea. The move I played, g5. I just wanted to be able to develop my knight normally. And uh, you can see that, uh, well, this position has gone from uh, slightly favorable to black to uh, slightly favorable to white. If I had played the other line, I think I would have kept a, kept a small opening edge. No, no, actually the engine is not that impressed with c6 either. It liked c5 or knight f6. And well, yeah, once again, I didn't want to play knight f6 and get into that kind of position, which uh, my opponent is probably very familiar with that pawn structure and how to exploit it. So anyway, g5, taking it out of the opening book. And uh, not in, in a bad way. I mean, it's like uh, this kind of advantage is, is pretty much nothing at this stage of the game. So he drops his bishop back, and now I can bring my knight out to f6. And I think uh, we get a few normal moves here. Um, oh, no, his next move is, is actually a mistake. He should play a normal developing move, like e3 or knight to c3 or even c4. Yeah, those are all reasonable ways to play. Instead, he moves the bishop again, so this is one of those... Uh, moves that violates opening principles, and there's nothing to be gained here um, by moving that bishop a third time. It just helps me develop another piece, and so now I have a slight edge. So it goes on with e3. I go knight bd7. I didn't want to block the c-pawn. I wasn't sure whether the c-pawn would go to c6 or to c5. I just wanted to develop the knight here and think about uh, trading the bishop off um, and under the right circumstances. Now the engine is recommending just taking right away, but he played the really interesting move f4. <laughs> Part of the point of g5 was to stop him from playing f4, uh, but he plays it anyway. And um, there's nothing to be gained from exchanging there. If I take, he just takes back and his bishop is equally well supported. Um, it looks like the counter strike, c5. So I've got pressure on both sides of this pawn structure. That might be interesting because now if I take a pawn and he takes back with a pawn, um, the other one, he is no longer defended by a pawn. It has to be taken by a piece. So I can inflict some changes on his pawn structure with that move c5. Or just castling. Uh, I decide to take off the bishop at this point. And uh, maybe it's not the best decision. It leaves me with some edge still. He takes back with the f-pawn because this was a bit loose on that square. He opens up the f-file and forces my knight to a, a square where it maybe will come under fire. And there's not too many retreats. Notice his pawns control these squares, and uh, and my uh, pawn is occupying that square. So my, my knight doesn't have any good retreats, I, so I'm going to be stuck defending it for a while. But I can defend it. So bishop d3, and I defended with bishop f5. Um, actually, I don't need to defend it here. Yeah, Maybe I was, I was missing this point a little bit. 
I didn't like the idea that he would take right away and drag my uh, D pawn over here to the E file and maybe he could build up an armada of pawns in the center. But that just doesn't uh, seem to be the case. So for example, if I had castled here, which is the engine's recommended move, and then if he takes the knight off, <clears throat> it looks like in this position, um, that's white's turn to move. If he tries to push out with c5 immediately, or c4 rather, to build up this pawn armada, it looks like I can undermine a c5. And then uh, if the d-pawn comes forward, the e-pawn will fall. It's under pressure from my bishop. So it looks like I have a good undermining strategy, and I don't really need to be afraid of this pawn armada. So his best point, his best move here is not to play c4, but rather to play uh, knight e2 maybe, or knight c3. Well, let's see. If we avoid knight c3, because we don't want to block the c-pawn, that leaves knight e2 as the option. And now I can play c5 anyway and just try and counterattack this center before it, uh, before it builds up. So it's all about... Uh, you know, I may have been afraid of that big pawn center, but it looks like it's all about the timing of the moves. It looks like I can uh, get in my strikes against the center quick enough to be prevent it from becoming a threat. Okay. In this position, however, after bishop d3, I just defended my knight here with the bishop so I could take back with a piece, not have to worry about that line. He goes knight to d2, putting more pressure on my knight. And at this point, I decided to play queen d7. That protects my bishop and allows the knight to move, but it does allow him to exchange everything off. Um, just dropping the bishop back to g6 is another way to protect the bishop, and uh, maybe a little better. Also, c5 with a counterattacking idea is a good move, too. But uh, this is not horrible. Still staying in the range of about even, and now we get the trades. Bishop takes was played, and it looks like it's a little better to take back with the pawn, but I decided to take the piece, and... Um, it takes. So I do end up with this funny pawn on uh, e4 in any case. Um, so yeah, I guess it would have been better for me to keep the, the uh, if we back up, if I had kept the bishop on, if I had taken with the pawn, <clears throat> then I'd have a piece to support that. Of course, he's got a piece to attack it with. But I guess if the, if the pawn is going to end up on this e4 square anyway, it's good to have this bishop on to defend it with. And after knight e2, Uh, I can play f6 to start undermining the pawns in this way. You know, the other reason why I'm reluctant to play all these break moves is my king is still in the center, and it's always a, a tough decision to try and uh, uh, open up, <laughs> potentially open up the center with these uh, pawn break type moves. Um, when your king is in the center, that can be very dangerous, but it looks like uh, that's the way to play in this case. And also, I'd have the advantage of the absolute bishop pair, as uh, Chris Chess explained likes to call it, and meaning I have two bishops and uh, my opponent has none. He has two knights. Uh, anyway, that's not the way I played it. We we have time to go into all these details because it's a short game. <laughs> it's going to end in another few moves very suddenly. Okay, so bishop takes, and uh, he took with the knight. I took back with the pawn, and now um, he goes knight e2, so he's just preparing to... Uh, well, he's just developing, he's preparing to castle, but also the knight can go to one of these two squares to put more pressure on my uh, pawn. And I castle queenside in this position, but you can see already, um, due to those exchanges, actually, um, um, this is a, a bishop is somewhat hemmed in by his pawns here, my bishop is, and it looks like his knight is going to be a good piece, and he'll get an open f file after he castles. So it looks like... Uh, uh, white already has quite a good position, so um, the main inaccuracy appears to be uh, when I when I took on uh, on e4 with my bishop instead of taking with the pawn. That's that's appears to be the move that gave white this edge. Okay, I went ahead and castled queenside here, and he played c3. Be a little more active here to uh, to bring the knight to uh, to g3 and just go after this pawn immediately. Um, second choice would be just to castle kingside, put some pressure on the f-pawn, but the, the knight move is, is even stronger. Um, c3, well, c3 is creeping up here. It's, it's uh, made its way up to the second or third choice of the engine. So not a horrible move, but it uh, gives back some of the edge, not the, not the most precise move. And now I play f5. I'm preparing to uh, support this pawn if he doesn't take. I was, I was really expecting him to take on passant, 
You can see actually that's the top choice of the engine. If he takes, then I would take back. And I thought in this case, um, I could use this pawn push to F5, bring my rick to the F5. I thought I'd be doing okay. And uh, it's still with an edge to, uh, still with an edge to white. I mean, he's got knight g3 and castling to put pressure on the f file. He's got a half open f file to work with, and he still has these this uh, strong strong group of pawns here, uh, which is shutting down my bishop. So uh, that would be uh, the best way to play. I, I went f5, and uh, right here he blundered in a, in a kind of an unaccountable way. Although you know, in a way, I was I was expecting it. You know, I have this loose pawn here, and I thought, you know, I wonder if he attacks that pawn with the move queen a4. And uh, because I was sort of expecting this move, I didn't immediately uh, notice that the queen is just hanging here. But it uh, just shows the importance of every move, whether your opponent plays something surprising or even something you expect. You should at least do a quick survey and see if there's a, there's a blunder on the board that you can take advantage of. And uh, fortunately, I noticed it and took his queen off, and so that was the end of the game. So a sudden end, but an interesting Opening. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.